Tiger fans, what is going on, guys? So I'm back. First This Week in Tigers baseball episode by myself. Last video was my brother and I, and we did like a season preview video, talked a little about our expectations for the team, talked about the players. We uh, got to go to opening day, went to the second game after opening day, got to hang out. It was a good time. So since then, a week has passed. And some of the shininess, some of the sheen of this team uh, looking like, hey, we're going to come out and we're going to destroy the division. You know, some of the hope and expectations kind of waned a little bit. The Tigers uh, over this past week, it wasn't the greatest week of baseball. Uh, that is for sure. In that video before uh, the, the first episode I did with my brother, I specifically said there is definite chinks in the armor that you could see that the Tigers could fall back to earth and there could be basically some kryptonites to uh, you know, make this team come back down off such a sizzling start. The AL Central has been kind of weird so far this year because the Tigers were the last unbeaten team in all of baseball. The Guardians pretty much kept up right with them because their pitching has been really good. And then all of a sudden, Kansas City has come out of nowhere and their, their pitching staff, their starting rotation has been absolutely dominant, uh, like comparable to the Tigers. Bobby Witt Jr. is off to a hell of a start. Uh, their their team in general, Vinny Pasquantino, finally got his first home run the other day, but big hits. I mean, they are coming up uh, playing good defense, coming up with big hits, and uh, they've risen to the top of the division. So, you know, it's early. We're not even 20 games into the season yet, but to kind of see, you know, this division that you thought that 84 wins could win it, and then you see these three teams at the top. You know, cream always rises to the uh, to the top anyway. So, but to see these three teams get out to this kind of a start, and now the White Sox are to be ten games under five hundred. You know, it's it's kind of crazy. So, looking at this past week, you know, a lot of people, even after the six and zero start, were concerned with how the offense was going to look and was going to play, and so far. It's been it's such has been the case. They already they got shut out, uh, shut out this week, this past week. You know they so I went to opening day. They won second game. Uh, they lost. Uh, I think blue that was the uh, the Blackburn start. Uh, Kenta Maeda horrible command that game. Blackburn pitched an absolute gem. The best part of that game was um, I got to see Mason Miller throw in person. And if you're not familiar with Mason Miller yet, you know, he's not going to be an Oakland A or a Las Vegas A or a Triple A, whatever they're going to call those team, that team now next year. If you're not familiar with him, you have to go check out his stuff. Pitching Ninjas has has some really good breakdowns of him. He pitched against Texas after he pitched against Detroit because uh, he had a, what was it, a five-out save on the second day of the season, I believe. So we were down there, and in the eighth inning, we always we always usually get seats in like 328, 330, somewhere up there when we go to Comerica Park. So my brother and I, we always go down to the concourse and the bottom half of the eighth inning so you're not walking down the from the third level with all the people, and it's just easier. And it's like, you know, when there's a safe situation, hopefully the Tigers are up, you're basically in standing room down on the lower level, and you're super close to home plate. Watching Mason Miller throw – from that distance, I don't know how people hit him because he was hitting 100, 102, and then he goes to Texas and is hitting 104 on the black. It's absolutely insanity to see somebody pitch like that. But so Oakland comes in, they get they they get their get shut out, and then get their asses handed to them. This uh, the last game of the series, Jack Flaherty absolutely gets gets crushed by Oakland, and you're sitting here scratching your head, going, huh. You know, because they, they come into the homestand undefeated. They have a, an awesome comeback win, as we discussed, you know, with their Urshela double, scoring Torkelson, whatnot. And then Oakland takes two or three. And somebody, I had read somewhere that Oakland has actually destroyed the Tigers since 2016 at Comerica Park. It makes no sense. As many bad teams, I mean, and most of the time, too, you know, the Tigers... Uh, from that time, didn't really have a lot of good ball clubs. And Oakland had a couple of okay ball clubs from, you know, from 2016 till now. They actually had a couple of good ball clubs. You know, so some of that makes sense. But, you know, you look at at least the last couple of years, the Tigers had a, a semi-okay year in 21 and then were, was good in the second half of last year. So then they go to Pittsburgh and Reese Olsen comes out and he is just 
fucking dominating through three innings and all of a sudden just loses his command and was absolutely gets his gets his shit wrecked. And I will say that Pittsburgh team, I can see why they got off to a, a good start as well because their starting staff, once they get Paul Skeens in that rotation to go along with that Jones kid who I picked up in fantasy, that Jones kid is electric. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this kid is looked upon as, like, Pittsburgh Spencer Strider, you know, in the next year. Because Spencer Strider, when he came up, when he was unknown, really, by a lot of people, you know, I remember picking up Strider in fantasy last year and dropping him and being able to pick him up again because he was just this guy that had made a couple starts with, with Atlanta. And then, um, or it was a couple years ago, I should say. I think that Jones kid has the same kind of stuff. I mean, that absolutely electric fastball. And we didn't get to get to see him pitch against the Tigers. But, you know, with with Mitch Keller, uh, that Jones kid, and then, like, potentially Paul Skeens, I mean, that, that team has that team has some hitters because they, they put together a lot of pesky at-bats against the Tigers. Their pitching staff was really good. Andrew McCutcheon almost hit his 300th home run against them. But that results to start just made no sense because his fastball and slider was really good the first three innings. And he was just mowing down hitters. And then it was just long at bat after long at bat, hard contact, and he kind of had to eat it some. So then they come out of Pittsburgh and they're getting shut out again and uh, going into the later half of the ball game. They just really hadn't been hitting much. And David Bednar comes out, and they ended up hanging four on Bednar with a couple of couple few weak hits, and uh, Bednar got booed off, uh, booed off the field, and it was insane because Bednar had already blown three saves coming in. Uh, that was his third blown save coming out of that game, and that's when you had like Roddy Teles come out and say, "Oh, we're Pittsburgh, we don't boo people here." Blah blah blah. Uh, Bednar's a two time All Star, but they save their ass taking a split because then they come into Minnesota, Minnesota comes in and they're facing Pablo Lopez and they hang seven on him. And you're like, okay, here's the Tigers offense that, you know, was struggling, who's been struggling, you know, they nearly got shut out three times already in the, uh, in, the, in the first 16 games. They've basically been having a couple of cheap runs late to keep it, you know, close. Uh, you know, they're already starting to, Andy Apanias is the first casualty of the season and they call up Winsel Perez who made his debut in the first game of Pittsburgh. He, he came in and pitched it. He got his first hit, I think, yesterday. And we're going to talk about that, too, about him and Justin Henry Malloy, uh, where Malloy sits in this organization. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But, you know, they they hang seven on Pablo Lopez, and then they go – they have a doubleheader because the game one of the games got rained out. And the first game of the doubleheader, they – it's a basically it's a back and forth game. Tigers take the lead early. Minnesota comes back, and they're basically they traded a couple of home runs with one another. They get to the to, uh, they get to the eighth inning, and Shelby Miller gives up his first home run, first run of the year, two outs in the eighth, gives up a home run. I, I want to say it was to Jeffers. I want to say I can't remember, but gives up a home run. They end up going to extra innings, and the Tigers two times, two times. Had the ability to end it. Torkelson came up with the bases uh, with a guy on third with the ba uh, I think with one or two outs. I can't remember. I think it was with two outs. Uh, it happened twice. Basically, the same. They had runners at second and third, one out, and I think in the tenth inning, and I think Tork came up in the eleventh and failed. And then in the twelfth inning, Alex Lane comes out, walk, 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 strikeout, strikeout. Had a ten pitch at bat, I think, with Ryan uh, Jeffers, who was kind of a, a pest this series, and. Um, he goes and gets a ground ball, and it goes right to McKinstry's legs with the bases loaded. And everyone's sitting here trying to blame the game on Zach McKinstry. Should he have made the play? Yeah, sure. He's a major leaguer. But for the most part, McKinstry has been really good at any position you put him at. You had two opportunities to take that ball game two times in extra innings, and you couldn't get a runner at 90 feet. You know, it, it's just – it's just – that's that's not that's not acceptable. And then the second game of the doubleheader, they get they get the doubleheader split from them. And then today's today's ball game, Jack Flaherty was kind of shaky early. He gave up a, a home run off of a slider, and then all of a sudden he stopped using it. And from like the third inning on, he was really good. Like he stopped throwing a slider as much, started throwing more fastballs and knuckle curves, and he went almost seven innings. You know, the the seventh inning kind of unraveled a little bit because he hit a batter. 
which led a guy on and he got an out and then Hench ended up pulling him because he wanted to, you know, to keep the game where it was, where the deficit was uh, because the Tigers, Bailey Ober shut them down. And then Joe Ryan had a game where Joe Ryan set his uh, strikeout, career high in strikeouts in that doubleheader. So it's like the Tigers at bats this series were really bad uh, off of twin starters besides the Pablo Lopez game. It, it just didn't make any sense. And then, so Javier Baez comes up in the eighth inning and starts the starts the rally and hits a solo shot. And I couldn't believe Javier Baez actually squared something up because Baez, I, I don't have his numbers in front of me, obviously, but I'd be willing to bet he hasn't been striking out at the same pace. He's been making a lot of contact. But his contact is just so ungodly weak. He's just been pop-up, pop-ups, dribblers, pop-ups, dribblers. So he's not striking out at the same pace. I would be willing to bet his strikeout uh, rate is under 27% so far to start the year. I bet you would be somewhere between 22 and 24, uh, which is still a lot, but it's, it's a lower pace. But his contact and his bail rate, it's has got to be like, if you were to look at his baseball savant page, it's got to be just ice blue. It's got to be just absolutely dark blue because he is just not hitting anything. So uh, a left-hander, I forget who it was on the mound. It, was a, it wasn't Griffin Jacks, uh, but I forget who the guy before Jacks came out through a sweeper over the middle of the plate and Baez lifted and split on this ball. And, uh, you know, it was really nice to see because as, as shitty as Javier Baez is at the plate and as lost as he looks at the plate, I mean, it legitimately it looks like he's just going up there swinging with his eyes closed. I will say a one positive thing about him as this glove has been dead consistent so far to start the year. And his throws this year are as good as they've ever been in a Tigers uniform. I have yet to see him have a horrific bounce that is going to hit Torkelson in the neck on such a weird hop because now he throws it into the dirt. So his throws so far this year have been really good. And for him to have a homer, that's nice. I mean, it's like we got this guy for a few more years. As much as I can't stand him and, you know, how people boo him on opening day, you, you got to have this guy hit somewhere. I mean, this is a guy that you gave this all this money to and he's hitting, he's hitting fucking eighth in your lineup because his bat is just that bad. So... But anyway, so the Tigers ended up uh, taking the lead in the eighth inning. And Jason Foley, who had pitched two innings the day before, came out. And you could you could tell uh, he, he's definitely going to get an off day because his command was kind of shaky to the last batter, the uh, last two batters of the inning. Uh, he ended up getting the save, though. The Tigers, Tigers stole one late. And, uh, you know, they're, what, three games over 500? What are they, nine and nine and six, I want to say. So, you know... You can see the chinks in the armor. Parker Meadows has got like three hits and 33 at-bats uh, to start the year. You look at through the rest of the lineup. Spencer Torkelson, it's, he's just been so in and out. Today, he hit a couple of balls hard where like it looked like you know he's starting to square it because he did have a double. He had a foul ball that Austin Martin went after that looked like he had gotten – but ripped it foul, but it was gonna be it was gonna be about twenty five feet short of the wall. But he like the swing looked a lot better because uh, it was a fastball up, which is a pitch he really hit well last year, especially middle up. And you know he just was in front of it and ripped it foul, and then he had a double. But his at bats have been so inconsistent. The amount of pop ups he's had, I I really don't like all the three ball chase that he's had. He's got he's been working trying to work counts, and. Some of these, if you go and look this year, Torkelson is chasing off the plate a lot, like a lot, a lot. He must not be seeing spin that well, or, you know, he's just being super passive uh, early in the count. And then when it gets two strikes on him, he's too too scared to strike out. He has been chasing a lot away off the plate. It's like, it's like watching Javier Baez. You know, with just uh, with better, slightly better plate discipline. I mean, you go look at some of the uh, pitches today. Uh, cutter off the pl cutters off the plate. He's swinging at the pitch that he got an RBI single on today. A little dink and dunk hit was a sweeper that was about you know a foot off the plate that he just dunked in there because of where the infield was pulled into, uh, trying to keep it tied. 
And, you know, he's had a lot of them hits. Like, last year, he he was ripping the ball early. They was just at people. And this year, he's had, like, a bunch of little dunk, slap, uh, slap punch, hit uh, kind of things. But it's, it's, it's got me a little worried about his plate discipline because he's not he hasn't walked really that much at all. And if just really pay attention to him. Like, he'll get to three ball counts, and it's off the plate. If it's sliders, sweepers, fastballs, uh, like cutters, teams are really, really – pitching him off the plate this year away and he's chasing way more because last year you know Turk struck out quite a bit last year if you go look at his walk numbers he did walk a, his he did walk a fair amount but last year he was way better when he had count leverage and when he got the three ball counts at laying off the outside pitches and this year you I, I've yet to see him really I don't even know how many I bet you he has less than 10 walks I bet you he has less than seven walks. I don't have the numbers in front of me. But I bet you he has less than seven walks. Because he's getting the three ball counts. And if you watch like someone like Mark Canna, who's been walking, you know, and works in a bat, he's been punched out a, a few times, you know, looking. But most of the time, them pitches are slightly off the plate. But the umpire is calling the pitch, you know, because it's, it's pitch recognition. But you watch. He ain't diving out. He ain't trying to hit that pitch. He, he's got a firm grasp of the strike zone because he knows where it's at. Torkelson is just like, it's like he can't see the ball. You know, it's like his time, his timing, he's so worried about his timing and he's so worried about getting on time to hit fastballs because he's just not, which is why he's got so many pop-ups and so many ground outs. He's, it's just a lot of three ball chase and a lot of chase off the, off the outside of the plate. And I'm just kind of worried about it because if he's going to chase down it away and he's going to chase breaking balls down it away and he's going to chase uh, spin fastballs down it away, he's never going to see anything over the middle of the plate to, to drive. He's just not. And you're like, well, okay, is he starting to come out of it? Because, you know, he had a, a he's got probably already five doubles already. I want to say five or six doubles. So, like, he's already had a little bit of extra base power and he's driven the ball a few times. But from a, the, a bat to a bat consistency, it's just not there. Because, like, if you look at, like, Riley Green. Like, Riley Green's already got three homers. He had a double, you know. Uh, I think he had a double in today's game. He's probably already got four or five doubles. But you look at the at bat to a bat consistency. You know, when, when Riley isn't going well, he's hitting a lot of balls to the second base, rolling over a lot of balls to first. He's hitting a lot of ground balls. But when he's going good, like you look at right now, you know, he's not striking out a shit ton. He's going up there and you could tell he's on time for the fastball because even when he's making outs, he's driving the ball. He's hitting the ball hard somewhere. He's taking the ball the other way. And with Torkelson, it's like when he can't time his fastball and he's really off, it's just pop up, pop up, pop up, pop up, strike out, pop up. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little worried about him so far to start the year, even though it's not that many at bats. I do like what I'm seeing from Colt Keith. Colt Keith is really starting to drive the ball. It feels like he's starting to get a grasp of the MLB speed at MLB level. You know, he had a ball the other day. He drove to center field. It was like 410 foot. Uh, he really hit that ball square. So, you know, you're starting to see better. And he's had some big two-out hits, especially in extra innings. He had one in New York. He had one the other day in the first game of the doubleheader. Uh, Carson Kelly and Jake Rogers have definitely cooled off uh, from their hot start. But Gio Urshela and Mark Canna have looked really, really good so far. Uh, they've been by far the two most consistent hitters uh, in the lineup. Now, I wanted to touch on Wenzel Perez right quick before we end this. It just kind of, if you look at Justin Hunter Malloy and Wenzel Perez's career minor league slashes, Malloy is a, is a lot better hitter. And he has a, a, a lot a more pop, everything. Better OBP, more pop, more OPS than him. For the tie, for Andy Abanez to go down, the Tigers must really, really not believe that Justin Henry Malloy can play any kind of defensive position. Because I know Perez is a switch hitting outfielder. And he used to play second base. And Perez has got a little bit of pop. Not as much pop as uh, Justin Henry Malloy. But... He is a converted outfielder. He can steal uh, a few bags. I think he already stole a bag already too in the big uh, in the big leagues. He's a switch hitter, but when you need offense and you need guys to like you know not to just give you good at bats and to not strike out a boatload, 
I mean, that's that's Justin Hemingway's calling card. You know, he did strike out more last year, but he's, again, had a lot of walks. He's had a lot of walks every year in the minor league level. The Tigers must really, really not believe that this guy is capable of playing any position even slightly below average to to call up Wenzel Perez over him when they need another bat in this lineup that can hit. Now, I understand he's a rookie and, he, and he, he would come up and there's no guarantee, but I'm just saying in the food chain of things for him to jump Malloy, that's kind of got me a little bit worried, you know, about the future of him in this organization and, and is he ever going to even get an opportunity? Because if you got Perez coming up out of nowhere and him getting a, a, a shot over Malloy to start the year, you know, that's... It's got me, it just got me, got me a little bit worried because if I think if Malloy could have played any kind of position, even slightly below average, he probably would have made the team because uh, he was hot to end spring. You know, him and Parker Meadows were, were really going off toward the last couple of, uh, like the last week of spring training. So I don't know. We'll see. Overall, you know, they're still in a good spot. Overall, they're over 500, which is absolutely fantastic because they've gotten off the slow starts in April, every year under Hinch. You know, the offense is still a little, it's still worrisome because it's been inconsistent, inconsistent at bats. You know, from what we saw a week ago, you know, when they were 6-0, yeah, their offense wasn't ripping it, but at least the at-bats looked good. And at bat to a bat, besides Javier Baez, you know, you believe that somebody on this team can get a hit. And now you're looking at it, it's like, Parker Meadows has got to be in there defensively because you don't want Riley in center field. And, you, you know, Perez is a converted outfielder uh, who I don't know how much center field he's got. You know, Veerling's okay center fielder. So it's like you only got so many options for center field. And, you know, you got to put Carey in there because Carey's really – he's been he's been one of their better hitters so far to start the year too. He's got shown good pop so far. But I don't know, man. You know, three, three for 31 – you need his defense really bad. You need his speed, but he strike. I mean, he had like four straight strikeouts, you know, the other day. So I don't know what to make of him. Torque's plate approach has got me a little bit worried so far to start the year. You know, Riley's looking okay. Pitching staff, you know, outside of Scooble, I'm still decently confident in. You know, Mize, uh, his fastball looks good. His splitter looks good. I think the results have been mixed just because he's still gaining his footing. Flaherty today, I honestly think Flaherty uh, needs to throw his, his fastball and knuckle curve and change a little bit more and work that slider in there a little bit less. It seems like he was more effective with his command uh, when he was fastball change up curveball for the second half of the game versus when he was throwing some hanging sliders. Because once he started throwing that knuckle curve a little bit more with his fastball, uh, he was getting some swinging through some meatballs right down the middle. Just like there was one to Carlos Santana and it was right down the middle of the plate and he swung right through it uh, because he had thrown him a couple curveballs in that at bat and it was it set up his fastball really nice. And then toward the end of the game, he got uh, a strikeout looking on a slider because he had kind of ditched it for a few innings there and, you know, it made it more effective. So I don't know. I think he's more, I thought he was more effective pitching off of his fastball curveball and working that slider in uh, every once in a while instead of trying to get so much swing and miss with it and only working his curveball in every once in a while. But, you know, Maeda's got me, his, his commands were really bad, but, you know, historically it shows that, you know, he works it out and he finds it and, you know, he, he becomes effective. It's been definitely a mixed result so far. That is for sure. Uh, Scoobles are good. Reese Olsen, I'm not super worried about Reese Olsen either. So I like, uh, I still think he's got good stuff. It's been a positive to see what Matt Manning has done uh, so far with both of his spot starts on their double headers. And uh, super, super stoked. Uh, he had a bit of a rough start uh, the second time through after having, what was it, five and two thirds no hit innings. The second time through, you know, he had a little bit of a rough start and then he just he just cruised through uh, the back half of his start and looked pretty good. I mean, generating swings and misses. The fastball command was good. He was getting uh, – he's, he's looked pretty good. So it's been nice to have that kind of depth as well. But anyways, guys, I'm going to jump out of here. I appreciate you watching. I'll be back next week. Have a good one. Go Tigers.